it's currently dinner time for the cats. I wanna show you guys something, not the living room here. It looks like a bomb went off. I just built my first PC, didn't know what I was doing, but I got it done and it's pretty awesome. We're installing freaking all the Adobe products right now, but yeah, it's on, it hasn't blown up yet. And what this means for you guys is I'm filming in 4K now. I'm gonna try it out and see how the whole workflow goes with this computer because my old laptop struggled with it. But that's not what I wanna talk about today. I wanna talk about something more paramotor related. So the other day I posed a question on my Instagram story of what sort of discussion topics you would like to see answered in a full length video. One of the suggestions was basically uh, how not to dye paramotoring. And I thought that was kind of an interesting idea. I like making videos about safety because inevitably I always end up doing some stupid shit, dangerous stuff, and I like to offset it a little bit by talking about safety often. But if you guys remember last year, Towards the end of the summer, I made a video kind of discussing some of the recent fatalities. I think last summer, we kind of had a bad year. At some point during the summer, there were like three fatalities right in a row, and it kind of hit the community hard. So I'm gonna do this video kind of as the beginning of summer, kind of talking about some things to think about as we get into flying more and more often during the summer. Just kind of talk about safety and also, go bomb around and have some fun. There's freaking deer all over the street. Here's me talking about safety, vlogging while I'm driving and I freaking hit a deer. So I guess to uh, go with the safety theme today, I'll give you guys my insight on the current weather conditions. I mean, I don't know exactly how many miles per hour it is, but you can see the trees are still blowing. The flag gets blown completely straight out every so often. And more so, it's coming from the south over my shoulder, which comes over the hill, which normally makes it turbulent here because of the mechanical turbulence caused by the hill. So with those things in mind, I'm gonna wait closer to sunset before I take off. I mean, I could fly right now and probably pull it off, but there's no use in risking it for no reason. I, if I can wait longer and conditions get better, then that's the thing to do. It's about T minus 30 minutes till sunset. Winds are still kicking pretty good, but it's coming right down the valley now and it's fairly smooth considering. I think that's a freaking trout farm down there or something. A hatchery? Is that what they do? They breed trouts? Hey, that guy's waving! What's up, guy? As I wave like a complete idiot with all four limbs, trying to look cool up here. I just ruined it. All right, so the discussion topic at hand today is how to survive paramotoring. Step number one, don't die. No, but seriously, I want to preface this by saying if you are like a beginner and you're thinking about getting into this sport, I want you to know that this sport is relatively safe. Obviously, it's less safe than not doing this sport. It's a additional risk you add to your life when you start flying a paramotor. But honestly, it can be very, very safe. And the good news is you have a lot of control over how safe you make it. It's not one of those things that like you go out and just randomly, pff, who knows what happened to Bill? He got sucked up by a tornado. Nothing he could do about it. He's gone. With that being said, there's no such thing as surviving this sport until you quit. What I mean by that is it's not like, you know, you hit the three year mark and it's like, oh, I've got enough skill, I'm immune. You're never safe, no matter how much experience you have, 
Obviously, experience helps, but at no point are you immune uh, to an accident or a unfortunate fatality. Check out that freaking hay bale slalom in slow motion because we got a headwind. slalom so yeah my point is it's an ongoing battle you always have to weigh risk in the beginning when you have little skill you take little risks but then when you gain more skill you start to take bigger risks and you always have to balance that one of the biggest things I can recommend for people getting into the sport to do it safely is to get training obviously in the US it's not required by law but I would say it's required by common sense. The thing is, in the recent like explosion of the sport, I feel like a lot of people had this big concern that people would start self-training and people would be dying left and right because they would be buying gear off of Craigslist and not knowing how to fly it and the like. Dude had his iPhone out the window. Me saying I can tell it's an iPhone from here. That's just the stereotype. Could have been an Android can't discriminate. So truth be told, I don't think that has been the case. I don't think there's a ton of people out there self-training and we don't see large numbers of people that are self-training dying in the process of self-training. That doesn't mean you should do it because I think the, the more valuable aspect, aside from just the initial training, is setting up the foundation for your entire flying career. Having that foundation of skills that'll serve you later down the road and just as important, the decision-making skills, the knowledge of weather, of regulations, mechanics, all those things that you'll learn in training that'll keep you safe down the road. So my recommendation is always to get training. And if you're looking for a good spot, check out my friends at Aviator PPG. Sign up and click my name and I'll send you a free t-shirt. All right, I say we enjoy the view from up here in the valley. It's a bit choppy down low, but we got smooth air right up here. So let's talk about some of the things that can get people in trouble and that I guess statistically have caused fatalities in the most recent years. Now I'm not gonna rank these by like most common to least common, but one of the big ones I think is, I guess you could call it pilot error. Either the pilot was doing a maneuver, like a wing over too low, uh, lost control, did something above his skill set, maybe spun or stalled his glider unintentionally. That seems to be sort of a common sort of thing. Uh, one thing you might not really think about is the spiral to blackout issue where people dive into a spiral and it becomes too much g-force and they black out and there's no recovering from that. The fortunate thing about pilot air stuff is that it's largely preventable and how is it preventable? I think the big thing is learning from other people's errors. That's one of the things I try to do in my reacting to crash video series is break down how other people um, have made mistakes and learn how not to do that myself and share that with you guys. Another big cause of incidents could be turbulence. Um, obviously we're on fabric wings that have strings that can go dangle if the wind hits it at the wrong angle. So it's important for us to understand turbulence like I explained before I took off, knowing the weather and making those decisions. And also, the good news about that is a lot of times you can predict the weather and you can make the right decision for where to fly and when to fly to prevent incidents. No freaking way! Eagle eyes up here, I just spotted a black bear. I think it's a black bear, but we gonna find out. Part of this discussion about safety, we got some wildlife. He looks like a big boy. What do they say on the internet nowadays? Thick with two C's? Dang. He looks like legit the size of a cow from up here. I'll tell you what. Dude, he is big. I'm gonna try to swoop down and glide past him off of power. 
so I don't scare him too bad. Oh, I think he might have seen me. Dude, look at that guy! Wow. It almost looks like he's limping. Maybe that's just how bears walk. Dude, that is awesome! Okay, I'm getting really close. I'm gonna turn away and slowly increase my power to try not to scare homeboy. Oh, no way, dude. I'm gonna yell to this guy. Yeah, the black bear! He's going towards the park! <laughs> that guy's walking his dog. Well, I'm gonna circle this bear from far away just to kind of keep an eye on him. The other point I wanted to make, aside from turbulence related issues, water has always been and still continues to be a prevalent issue where you go into the water and you can't get out of your paramotor. You're strapped into an anchor and people drown. But there are things you can do to prevent it. You can put on flotation, which is definitely a good thing. Aside from flotation, having a hook knife and just avoiding water altogether. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I sometimes do some stupid shit. Oh no way, there's a deer! There's a deer next to the black bear! Oh, this is getting heated up here. The deer doesn't know what to do. He's like, man, that is a big dog. Never seen a dog that big. He's standing his ground though. Can you imagine we witness a fight? Oh, there he goes. We gotta name this guy Ronald. Ronald sounds like a good name for a bear. Uh, the last thing I'll put in here, which normally isn't a cause of fatal accidents, but it happens way too often, is ground starting your paramotor. And by that I mean the paramotor's on the ground, you yank it, and for whatever reason you slip or there's a mechanical issue, the paramotor goes to full power, it overpowers you, you can't hold it back, and you get chopped up by the propeller. I don't know if you guys can see, but the bear's headed into someone's yard. I'm watching from a distance. I don't see any people out at that house. The bear is currently walking down the street. You can't see him, he's behind trees, but that's what he's doing. Alright, the bear has gone into this very thick wooded area. So I think I'm gonna stop tracking him for now. Look at that sunset! Gorgeous, mate! Y'all know the, uh, the number one cause of paramotor fatalities is a bear attack. You know, you see some of these kids flying their damn paramotor fan mobiles, and next thing you know, they see a black bear start following it. Unexpected to them, they have an engine out, crash next to the bear, get mauled. You always gotta watch out for the elusive paramotor black bear. You may think you're safe up in the sky, but one fouled spark plug and your dinner. And land way out here because that's a better decision. Jack Glad, you would not believe it. He saw a cat. I saw a black bear. There was a guy walking his dog. Yeah. He's headed right for him. He saw him. Yeah. And I flew over and was like, you're a black bear. And he was like this in the field. Yeah. He was like, you're a big old boy. <laughs> How's it going? Oh, so, so what is this? Like, what is it called? It's called a paramotor. A paramotor? Yeah. Okay. It just seemed cool. We saw you <laughs> right It's super you were, cool. You were doing tricks? 
A little bit. So how much is it? Cause this, I'm definitely about to buy it. <laughs> um, so like all brand new gear, somewhere from like eight to twelve thousand dollars. Oh, you guys saw it? Yeah. No way. Yeah, I was following him all the way across. Oh, that's oh, that's <laughs> Wait, for real? Yeah, there's there's some guy walking his dog back there and he was like headed right for him. Oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> all right, thank you though. Yeah, man. Give me, give me two years, I, I have my own. You got it, do it. Well, that was a nice surprise little sunset action going on. I'm all packed up, ready to go home. I hope you guys enjoyed my little discussion on how not to die paramotoring. And I hope you found it educational and somewhat entertaining because Mr. Bear made an appearance and I think that was pretty epic. Ugh, that is an ugly spider. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like down below and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Till then, peace. Zzz.